We send mended nets to invisible depths while brown pelicans swarm around us. Sometimes no side of the boat produces, unlike in the old trick. With feet blanched from seawater spreading over the deck, we send mended nets to invisible depths while brown pelicans swarm around us. An icon doesn't take requests. I have no other eyes to look into. I contemplate what I can see here, nothing left but to gaze at pain and send mended nets to invisible depths. Thank you. Ten Fathom Ledge. All that's visible is a ribbon of coral, briny phrasals above a ledge nearly erased by silt and scalloped water, ghostly and opaque. Beyond is the dead outer shelf, its tragic red surge of blossoms bruising the abyss. What to do? The others have entered the freighter's wrenched hull, their light beams sliding like opera gloves along the awkward deck and sides. I am left playing with goatfish on Ten Fathom Ledge, like the forbidden step off your grandmother's porch, the first plank as far as you will go toward the long, bright yard, the pitch of children rippling from a swing. Why not be content with spade fish and nurse sharks, the confusion of gravity, the wise bezel that grasps all our time as bottom time? A gentle surge toward the wreck lifts, pauses, then sloshes me right back on the ledge. Everything lasts forever. The jetties, sand, sky, pipers, even the pebbles of sea glass, cobalt, old as lace dollies. Others can walk down the beach toward thin shacks and driftwood shelters, toward haze and mist. I'll sit on an unclaimed log, which has drifted here for now and watch a midday sun crystal on the waves. Don't be fooled. The Gulf is not a polished cruiser or a V-Hall on the dock. The Gulf is not a flat iron idling between sets of bowing waves. Its striated water lifts itself inch by inch and closes in on the shore. It is alive, playing its chords, humming its undertow. You will be welcomed on your back as it slides its dress collar over your thighs, runs its breezes and tensions all over you. It will welcome your face floating down, closed eyes are open, breathing August strong sweat. It will welcome you a thousand times. It wants you to practice sinking and feel how much you belong. Others can walk the shore's silver brocade and pace back again. Don't be fooled. The sky is complicit. There's no discerning compass here. The wings and water pull equally toward the beauty of transparency. Cirri, sea fans, music, love, and the pans and stirrups of pelicans, which weigh that anything is possible, but that nothing has to be. Thanks. This is the shark bite, lightning strike, serial killer capital of the world where we stand on a hill made of oyster shells by Indians 600 years ago. From the top, we can see both sides of the peninsula, a green confusion that rose through the hill. It's possible they laid their dead here, stacked husk on husk, built a place the living could climb. Closer to God, to see what the dead could see. We've unlearned that to use every piece of our dead might be the true way to lay them at rest. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me and I in him, John 6.56. The dead can do that, promise. What do the dead ask us to see? The wild surf on one side of the land, a shock of horizon after, open water. It was a place to look out from. Beloved, you are fork and road and every line against the sky. We are all mouth already, like these constant birds knit to the tide, to the push of water onto beach, their beaks what someone might call mad with search, but this is all they are, 
consuming, watching to consume, a flight, a struggle against a wave, ill-timed, muscle flapping to pull against the drag. Love, we have barely gone inland. Husk to husk, light to light, you are every coast to me. The beach used to be where I would go to talk to God, and I never swam. It was called Wonderland, the subway's last stop. I went in winter, in the year without snow. I drew a circle around myself in the sand, prayed to be saved. Here, now, I'm a being sung back. I've learned to walk into the ocean, to brace myself, to let go. Thanks. The pelican looks to grow right out of his wooden post, flappy chin tucked straight down against his neck, making his head an ax to open the world. You can't see his eyes, but you assume he's staring out with sternness, willing the world to do the right thing, the way my father watched the news, and sometimes me over his black-rimmed glasses, head tilted down, staring. And why should a bird remind you of wisdom, an idea of virtue that can almost project itself? To whom does the resemblance give credit? What do we know of pelican hunger? What we know of hunger, of sternness, of an animal's tilted head, a heritage of bone. Thank you. My dad carried me down to the shore in the dark to wait for the sun to come up and over the coast, the burning needle threading light through the world. I wondered why it was never quick, just the slow lightning as if the world was only being lifted. To begin, the white water birds flying low were just strange flashes, gathering whatever low light lived in darkness and flinging it out. Then it was day, and they were whole birds with edges and flight. When I closed my eyes, the world went on. The birds did not hang frozen to the sky. Why, in one end, would we all close together? The world raised, light as a map, and folded up. As if he could rip longitude from latitude like confetti and let it all fall. One day he cried, hey, long little summer, I could just eat you up. So the fire sowed a brilliant light through all the trees. Snowdrifts of ashes settled into soil, readying ground for new growth. I've also heard the waters rising. This too always slouches away as if to say, you won't get out that easy and you won't get out. Some say the world will end. Thank you. The dark peoples with things keys, coins, pencils, and pens, and for them, pockets grieve. No street lights or signs, no liquor stores or bars, only a lighter for a flashlight, and the same face trees, similar armed stones, and crooked bushes staring back at me. There is no path in the woods for a boy from the city. I would have set fire to get back to my car, but Palomar is no El Camino in an empty lot. The plastic dripping from the dash and the paint bubbling like a toad's throat. If mountains were old pieces of furniture, I would have lit the fabric and danced. If mountains were abandoned crack houses, I would have opened their meanings with flame. If that would have let the wind and trees lead my eye or shown me the moon's tiptoe on the moss as you affect my hand as we walk into the side of a Sunday night. Thank you.